Thank you for being here. Um, like I mentioned earlier, my name is Amanda Allison. Feel free to just call me Amanda. Amanda Allison is kind of a handful, but that's the name that my parents gave me. <laughs> um, I am a blogger, a YouTuber, the co-founder of the Fresno Women's Summit, a social media consultant, and I would like to think I'm a pretty cool chick sometimes. <laughs> um, I am a born and raised Central Valley girl. I was born in Fresno and raised in the very small town of Mendota, California, which is about 40 minutes just outside of Fresno. Um, oops, you know what? <laughs> okay, sorry, distracted once again. Um, so I was raised here all my life and ever since I was little, I've always had a passion for creating, for writing, um, for speaking. And in 2008, uh, while I was taking fashion classes at Fresno City, I started my blog. And at first my blog was about fashion news, but I found that that wasn't for me. It just, it wasn't vibing with me. Um, so then I like transitioned to talking about my personal issues, um, body image, my struggles with weight and accepting my body. Um, and at one point, I remember hopping onto Twitter and discovering plus size fashion bloggers. And my, my world just changed. It opened up through that. I was able to find inspiration to share my personal style, as well as discover a whole new sense of self-love and appreciation for my body and um, the bodies of others. I really believe that fashion is a vehicle to love yourself. When you look good, you feel good, and that energy radiates within you and transfers to other people. Um, a big part of the reason that I started my, my YouTube channel specifically was because I didn't see anyone that looked like me, um, that was plus size, that was Latina, that was a proud Mexican-American woman that, that loves fashion and beauty and community and all of the good things. Um, so I took it upon myself to start my YouTube channel to create that community. And it has been like the most beautiful experience since then. I have been able to connect with women and men all across the world, not only through style, but through genuine conversations. Um, by attending conferences, speaking at conferences, and also extending that experience to local small businesses to do, to do their social media consulting and management. Within that time frame, I also started the Fresno Women's Summit with my dear friend and co-founder, Natalie Juarez. Um, the Fresno Women's Summit is a one-day conference to empower women and cultivate community here in the Central Valley. We pride ourselves on being a safe and inclusive space for people to connect, to build relationships, whether that's business related, um, friendships, whatever they need in that moment, we wanna make sure that they get that. We wanna make sure that it's a safe and positive space for the underrepresented, the misrepresented, and people that just crave connection. So that's, um, that's a little bit about me. <laughs> um, and I also wanted to share some fun facts about me. Um, and while I'm doing that, I want you to share fun facts about you in the comments below. So let's get into it. Oh, I should have, I should have done that, but it's cool, it's cool. <laughs> Here are some things so you can get to know me a little bit better aside from like that boring stuff that I just talked about. Here's some fun things that you can know about me. Things that I'm currently obsessing over. Animal Crossing, 100% is my new obsession. Whew, the obsession is real, so real. I actually, I have my Switch right here. So as soon as we are done here, I'm about to power this baby up so I can go on and get my Nook Miles. <laughs> um, I love Animal Crossing. This is my case, by the way. So cute. <laughs> I love Animal Crossing because it is so 
innocent in essence, um, yet it still makes you think, it, you still have to strategize and figure out how you're gonna navigate your island and shop and blah, blah, blah. Um, it also serves as a really good escape for me and so many people during this time where we are lacking physical connection. Animal Crossing to us still gives us that connection that we need to function. Um, so I, I just, I really love it. I also really love TikTok. You can find me on there almost every day. If I'm not uploading, I am liking and commenting like crazy because the content on there is so good. It's very um, throwback content. I feel like it's effortless and that's what makes it so consumable and addictive. Um, another thing that I'm always obsessing over, not just currently, but I got to throw it in here anyway, um, is BTS. I love BTS. They are um, a band from South Korea. They're one of the top bands and artists in the world, and they spread messages of positivity, self-love, encouragement through their music. They talk about real issues, whether that's depression, um, and various forms of mental health, dealing with stressors in your life. They really bring that to life in their music and they're also just really cool people. Um, and even more than that, they are a community. I have met some of my best friends in the world through BTS um, and really formed a bond unlike anything else, thanks to um, these awesome guys. So. Yeah, I really love them. Maybe one day I'll give a room tour and you can see my little BTS corner over here. <laughs> I also love charcuterie boards. Um, I have a whole Instagram dedicated to charcuterie boards and I will touch upon that a little bit later. But yo, know, if you give me a nice cutting board, some cheese, some nuts, some berries, some salami, I will whip you up the best charcuterie board. <laughs> Um, to speak to my Animal Crossing obsession, this is actually something that I tweeted the other day. I caught myself slipping. I was about to look in my closet for a pair of new shoes, then remembered I bought them in Animal Crossing, not real life. True story, people. True story. I was about to look in my closet for these really cute embroidered flats. They weren't there because I didn't buy them in real life. <laughs> Anywho. The struggle is real, but it's fun. <laughs> so let's get into today's topic, what you are all really here for. Let's talk about engaging from a distance. This is your real AF guide to building community, creating sincere content, and staying connected while social distancing in real life. I believe that a big part of creating is being your most authentic self. You're being vulnerable to the degree that makes you comfortable and utilizing that honesty to put out quality content and really build a strong community. So we're going to touch upon all of those things. So numero uno, self-discovery. So in order to truly engage and build that community, build that connection, you've got to go back to the basics and that is, who are you? Heavy, heavy ass question, but it's real. Who are you? What are your traits and interests? What is your purpose? And how do you translate that to social media? Um, some good questions to ask yourself are like, what are things that make me happy? What are what are things that I love doing as a kid that I can probably still do as an adult um, that not only fuel me, but can make me money or have me reach a wider audience or create something with my hands or what have you? What are the things that bring you joy and can bring joy to other people? So it takes a lot of self-discovery, really looking at who you are, what are your personality traits? Are you um, a very sensitive person? Do you have tough skin? And how can you utilize those traits to create something awesome? Through like those self questions, you can find your purpose. Um, I have to say like, if it wasn't for discovering the 
plus size fashion blogging community, I don't think I would have discovered my purpose as soon as I did. Um, through being a part of that community and creating content centered around style and self-love and acceptance, I was able to discover that a big part of my purpose is encouraging other people. It's cheering on other people, supporting them as much as I can. And in turn, that fuels me, that makes me happy. Um, so think about that. What are your traits and interests? What is your purpose? You can have multiple purposes, by the way, it's not just one. And how will you use those things to create genuine content and connection on social media? So once you have those nailed down, you can move on to your social media bio. So this is a mini summary of who you are, what you do, and your contact info. So here's my social media bio. I have variations of this bio sprinkled across all of my social media platforms. So for Instagram, for instance, I have that I am a California chica and overthinking Virgo, feeding your feed with everyday style, real convos, sprinkles of my favorite things. I also included a tag to the Fresno Women's Summit, my location, which is Fresno, California, and a link to um, various content that I have out on the internet. Um, as you can see here, I have included a little bit about who I am, what I do, um, an organization that I'm really passionate or involved in, um, my location. If you have room, I would also include your email. If you have um, a physical retail store or an office building, include the address. Actually, if you have the address listed in your Instagram business account, it will automatically show on your profile. Well, you just have to make sure, I shouldn't say automatically, you have to make sure that you're checking that you want to show it, but definitely show it. Um, because a lot of people need to see that information right up front. Many people don't want to click the contact button. They don't want to click the email or the drop down menu. They want to be able to see as much as they can from the jump. So as much vital information as you can include in your bio, the better. How are we doing? Are we good? Let me see if I can check out the chat real quick. Oh, yay, I see some fun facts. Okay, okay. Suze, yes, for the Real Housewives. Okay, okay. Let me exit that. <laughs> we will circle back um, because don't get me started on the Real Housewives. <laughs> okay, so um, numero dos of this creating content, genuine connection is to actually create. One thing that really helps me create um, and helps my clients create are categories. Categories are go-to topics to discuss on your social media. I recommend making a list of five to 10 topics that you can always go to. Um, what this does is act as your personal guide to creating. It takes the guesswork out of figuring out and scrambling what to post. Oh my God, it's Wednesday, it's 12 p.m. I haven't posted on my stories. No problem. You have a list of things that you can always talk about on your stories or on your feed. That's why you're creating these categories to kind of give you a focus, to save time, to be efficient, um, and to be intentional with what you're sharing. I think that having categories really set the foundation for quality content, for, um, for connection and engagement. So next thing I'm going to do, show you my categories. Here are mine. Um, and I definitely need to update these. I want to add a few more, maybe remove some, but 
we'll get to that another time. <laughs> um, these are my categories. So these are things that I am comfortable and want to talk about on social media. Fashion, beauty, self-love, mental and emotional health, food and drink, travel, music and dancing, family and friends, social media tips. If you'll notice, some of these have nothing to do with the, the product that I may be selling um, or more, what's the word I'm looking for? They're not, they're not centered around the item that I'm trying to push onto people or promote, if you will. Uh, for instance, if you are in the product-based business and you have, um, you have a journal, that you just created and you're trying to sell, you can still use categories outside of the journal. I find that having categories give you storytelling skills. Um, categories give you the empowerment to share and give your audience the opportunity to trust in you because they are getting to know you outside of your business or outside of, of whatever you display to the world. It's giving them a peek at who you are. When they see who you are, they connect with you and they trust you. And that trust is so, so valuable. That trust cannot be bought. So when it does come time for you to sell that journal and you have this awesome marketing campaign and you share it, this community of trust that you've built will gravitate to it naturally because they trust you, because they know that you get up every morning at 6 a.m. and you have a cup of coffee. They know that you have two kids that do ballet on Saturdays and have um, a tutoring session on Thursday nights because you have let them in in that way because that's a part of your category. Essentially, categories are storytelling strategies to to share yourself and really build that connection so speaking of connection let's get into it let's connect let's talk about the ways that you can connect these are my top eight ways to drive engagement and build community. Um, like we've touched upon before, you, I believe you can't do this successfully if you aren't authentic, if you aren't genuine, if you aren't comfortable with sharing what you wanna share. So use these eight ways that are very easy but efficient to really get you there. Number one is to follow people, brands, creators with similar interests. I feel like this is self-explanatory, but it needs to be reiterated. You want to find like-minded people on social media and in real life, if you have that opportunity, when it's safe and sound to do so, don't get it twisted. <laughs> um, but you want to find people that have an interest like yours or that think like you, um, that you feel comfortable being around in a virtual social setting. Um, and this is easy to do by searching hashtags, by looking at geotags and seeing who else is in the area that's doing something similar to you. It's also as easy as following one account, let's say on Instagram, for instance, and as soon as you hit that follow button, Instagram automatically has a drop down menu with suggested accounts that are similar to the one that you just followed. So that's a great way to see who else is out there that is kind of on the same vibe as you. I love using that tool. I think it's a great way to discover new people, um, see what they're doing, find inspiration, find connection, all that good stuff. Number two is a personal favorite of mine. These are creative replies. So you're commenting back to people, you're liking their comments, um, you are engaging with them as authentically and as frequently 
as possible. Um, I, I really believe in, in commenting back as much as you can, even if it's just a, an emoji, like make sure it's the best damn emoji that you can put out there. Um, you know, people, it's so easy to double tap something, but when people comment, that shows like another level of investment in your content. And I think it's only right to give that investment back to those people because you build this relationship of trust, you build this relationship of engagement, and that um, really, really creates depth within your community. Another thing that I love doing and that I highly, highly suggest people also do um, are sliding into people's DMs and leaving video and voice messages. I mean this in like the least creepy way possible. <laughs> but like, let's say for instance, a follower, you're a blogger and a follower of yours DMs you asking, oh my gosh, your skin is looking so great. What face oil are you using right now? Instead of texting them that face oil, why don't you send them a video? Let me see. So we kind of do something like this. So and so Sally Q asked me about my face oil. Instead of me texting, I'm gonna, hey Sally, thank you so much for your question. This is the face oil that I'm using right now. I use it every night. I tap it into my skin followed by my moisturizer. I think it's really made a difference in my complexion and the brightness of my skin. I'm gonna send you the link right now so you can get hooked up too. Easy peasy. <laughs> um, I think having like, having that video connection like straight in their inbox really is a special experience. Um, it's more than text. It's, it's like a different layer of connection and the same with voice messages. Feel free to reply with a voice message if you're not comfortable doing a video. Um, also, side note, if you aren't comfortable with doing videos such as a live or a story, try just sending videos to your friends and family through messages, whether that's text or um, DMs. I think that's a great way to get comfortable with seeing yourself on the screen, with hearing your voice, because that can definitely be really cringy, but it's a good way to practice. Um, and then, like I said, use emojis. Emojis are life and should always be used when appropriate. <laughs> oops, oops, oops. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Call to action is the third way to create this connection with peeps. Um, a call to action is a prompt that encourages action. And did I? Okay, sorry, I got messed up. <laughs> um, but it's basically a prompt to encourage action within your content. Um, some examples of this are asking questions at the beginning or end of a post, um, using polls in your posts and stories, and also using really strategic keywords to, to incentivize, incentivize that action, um, such as check out, watch, tap, shop, swipe up you could say like hey guys i just posted a new video on my channel it's about xyz check out the link in my bio or oh my god i just launched this awesome sweater it's handmade by my sister she's only making five of them they are so special and cozy please get one for yourself um, tap the link in my bio swipe up to check it out really being intentional with these keywords will naturally cause um, a reaction to take action on their part. So here's an example of a CTA in a post that I did a couple days ago. Um, this was for a partnership I did with Toyota and BookSparks. And as you can see at the beginning of the post, I asked a question. I wrote, have you ever taken a road trip and did something or did everything on a whim? I also followed that up with another CTA at the end of the post. And I wrote, tell me about a trip you're looking forward to taking once it's safe and sound to do so. So not only did um, I ask for their feedback, but I, kind of, I, like, I hit them two times with it. So that way they had an opportunity 
one way or another to connect with me. Here are some examples of CTAs in Instagram stories. This is a story from yesterday about the No Place Like Home Fest. Um, I simply shared the schedule for today and then I wrote at the bottom, the schedule's up, this lineup is fire, tell me who you're gonna see. I drew a little arrow pointing to the send message box and sure enough, I got DMs of people telling me who they were excited to see, what they're looking forward to, how they're gonna spend their time during the festival. Another example are polls, which I mentioned. Um, I love doing polls. Polls are so freaking fun. Um, this one, I, <laughs> I found um, this journal in an old box in the shed. Actually, my brother found it. And it's a journal from high school. And I thought, I should read this online. <laughs> so I asked my audience, should I do a live diary story time? 96% said, oh, hell yes. And 4% said, this ain't it. <laughs> Um, I appreciate all feedback. Um, so, you know, that happened. <laughs> I'm still going to do it. And I think it's going to be fun. Um, but no, I'm just kidding. I think also like a good way, like say you really, you can't handle people saying no. It's something that's going to break you. You don't want to deal with it. A way to get around that when it comes to polls is to giving them a yes or a yes option live story time diary oh hell yes yes so one <laughs> one way or another they've got to click yes um, i also think it's just really funny to do something like that instead of doing the typical yes or no speaking of instagram stories video is where it's at video is the place to be <laughs> video is the place to be um, People are craving that connection and video truly helps them feel closer, whether that's going live or uploading an edited video. Um, that form of content adds such a different connection, a, a real layer of depth that you can't get from a photo. People love putting voices to faces. They love putting faces to names that they see while they're scrolling on their feed. It's a way for people to get to know you a little bit better and for you to know your audience a little bit better. Here are some uh, platforms that I really love for video right now. Instagram Live, Instagram TV, videos in your feed, TikTok, Zoom, YouTube and YouTube Live. All of these are really great platforms for sharing that live action content. All right, so number five, we're almost done. Wow, we're zooming through this. Um, number five is cross promote. And what I mean by cross promote is to share one piece of content across different parts of one platform. So this looks like creating a post in your feed, for example, and you're sharing that post, that very same post in your Instagram story, while also supplementing it with exclusive story only content. So here's an example. So again, referring back to that Toyota campaign, this was a post that I did in my feed. I, I shared my caption, I shared the, vid the photo, I tagged properly. Um, and then at the end of my caption, I wrote, peep my story to see some of the adventure I had with an amazing group of women exploring Joshua Tree in the 2020 Toyota Highlander. This post went up at the very same time this story went up. So I'm basically like inundating people's feed with this awesome content. These story slides you can only find in my story. So that's what makes them exclusive. So the way that I did that is I did my post, I shared my post in my story, and then I followed that with these really cool videos and pictures from that day. So it's a great way to, um, to market more within that one platform. 
Okay, tag it up, number six. Tag it up. Um, this is really important. This is extremely important because you wanna make sure that you are tagging properly and efficiently when it comes to stories, feed posts, videos, anything like that. Um, tagging people in your photos and captions increases your visibility. It does so, especially if you tag them within the actual photo on Instagram, for instance, because that photo is gonna appear on their profile. So it's a great way for you to expand your reach organically by um, being a part of this person's profile. Another great thing that I really love doing are using hashtags. So when it comes to using Instagram stories, you can do 10 hashtags per story. And I'm gonna show you a little example here. Okay, so I've got, I've got my picture looking, looking all right. <laughs> um, I'm gonna do 10 hashtags Hashtag hello, hashtag no place, NPHL 2020, hashtag Fresno, hashtag Fresno blogger, hashtag Saturday vibes. So I've got all these hashtags here, right? Looks a little washed out, but hopefully you get the idea. So I've got all these hashtags here. What I'm gonna do is kind of shrink them and then just slide them off the screen so they are no longer visible. Even though they're no longer visible, they will still so show up in the um, search results of that hashtag. I think this is a great way to keep your visual clean and um, nice and neat while still making it um, searchable on Instagram or any other platform that allows that content. So you can use up to 10 in a story. You can use up to 30 hashtags in an Instagram post. I love doing three to five hashtags within the actual caption and then using, using the remaining 20 something in the comment. A little tip for when you're having trouble deciding which hashtags to use within the caption are to remember the things um, that you want people to see and you want people to click on. So let's go back to that uh, business owner that is creating that journal. It just launched and she wants to make a big deal out of it. So she's going and she wants to have a branded hashtag for the campaign. So what she'll do is she, she will hashtag that um, statement in the caption. Uh, because she wants people to see it, she wants people to click it, she wants people to use it. Um, but she doesn't really want people to click on the hashtag journal in her caption, so she's going to use hashtag journal in the comments. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> Essentially, you just want to be strategic with which, ha which hashtags you're using, where they're going, what do you want people to click on, what do you want people to see and use. Another thing um, that's really vital when it comes to tagging is adding locations. Adding locations, I feel like is so underrated right now when it needs some more love. Adding locations in your post, adding locations in your stories, they really increase that visibility. They give you that organic reach. They make you more accessible to people that you might not reach normally. So here's an example. <laughs> So this is going back to charcuterie boards. This is my um, charcuterie board account. It's just something that I like to do for fun on the side. Um, you'll see here on the left side, I tagged all of the companies that I use to make that charcuterie board in the photo. So not only am I telling people, hey, these are the brands that I use to make this board, but the people on those brands Instagram Wait, let me rephrase that. This photo will show up on those brands' Instagrams, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, and then to go to locations, I didn't wanna share that I was at my house 
even though people probably know that I'm in my house, I was like, what else can I put there? So I decided to use Cheeseville. <laughs> I think using um, quirky, fun, sassy locations adds a sense of humor, adds, um, it shows your personality a little bit more. It gives you room to play. Um, and I think it's, it makes you memorable. And at the end of the day, like you wanna be memorable in your community or to people that you just come, come across. And a great way to do that is to just having fun with locations. Okay. All right, so showing up, I think this is probably the, um, the most consistent of the, uh, the ways to connect and engage. Um, when it comes to like really creating a brand on social media or staying connected with your friends and family, it's important to be as consistent as possible. Let me just say that you define your own consistency. That doesn't mean that you have to post every day or create every day, because that's not feasible for a lot of people. And also for a lot of people, that can be really overwhelming. So you define your own consistency. Does that consist consistency look like two times a week? Does it look like five times a month? Whatever it is, stick to it. That that intentionally like gives you some strategy, it gives you a schedule to stick to, but it also creates um, a sense of awareness within your audience, within your community. They know that every Wednesday at 5 p.m. they can see a post from me, or they know that two times a month on a Tuesday, I'm gonna upload a video. It's a great way to like keep yourself accountable while also having um, this sense of awareness and a schedule for the people that are involved in your community. Something that I also like to do, if I can't post consistently, I am still interacting consistently. I am still showing up consistently. For example, I don't post on my Instagram feed every day. Like, that's a lot for me. <laughs> I, I can't do it. I don't want to do it. I've tried to do it before in the past. I burned out. I, um, I lacked creativity, I felt a lot of pressure on myself, so I realized I was gonna take a step back. So if I can't post every day, I'm gonna make sure that I'm in my comments every day, that I'm in my DMs every day, or that I'm sharing other people's content every day, that I am going to people that comment on my page and going to their page and commenting on their content as well. It's a great way to still show up. It's a great way to still keep your business, your brand, your um, presence at the forefront of people's minds because they know if you're not posting, you're still there and you're still connecting with them on a really dope level. Also, like when it comes to when it comes to the algorithm, there's all this talk about algorithm this, algorithm hates me, algorithm X Y Z. I think if you want to try to quote unquote beat the algorithm. One way is to show up, like bottom line, just show up. And if you really want to like get in the zone, show up after you've posted within that first hour. Any comments that you get within that first hour or even two hours, reply to them immediately, like them immediately, share the content that you just posted in your story immediately so you gain that traction. Instagram, for example, is going to recognize that traction and boost it to people in their explore page. So the more engagement you can create as soon as posting, the better you will create, um, the better your chances are to create visibility. Ooh, hold on, I need to drink water. <laughs> Did I go through all the steps? Okay. Wait a minute. Did I? House remote video yeah okay so now we're here i found this um i found this piece of art late last night and this whole week i've been looking for a quote i've been looking for a piece of art 
that really connected to the purpose of this presentation. And I literally found this one at like two in the morning. And I said, this is it, like this is perfect. I, I love this and I hope that you love it too because during this time right now, we are all really doing our best. And I believe there's a lot of pressure to be productive. There's a lot of pressure to write the next great novel. There's a lot of pressure to um, sorry. <laughs> There's a lot of pressure to do everything you can while you're at home, and you don't have to do that. Honestly, as long as you can still open up your eyes every day and you are breathing on your own, you're doing your best, and that's all that you can do. Whether you want to be productive or not, whether you want to learn how to engage on social media or not, like the fact that you're still showing up for yourself in any capacity is amazing, and that should be applauded. Don't get caught up in that comparison trap that's on social media right now, where you feel like you have to create and you have to find a way to survive when honestly, like you just being who you are in this very moment is enough. And I think um, this, this piece of art like really resonated me, resonated with me for that moment. There's definitely something to said, be said about being productive, about um, being creative, about connecting, but you've got to make sure that you're taking care of yourself first. When you take care of yourself, you're able to find a peace and a happiness that you can't really get elsewhere. And then on top of that, once you've connected with yourself, then you may have the inspiration and the empowerment to create this content, to connect with other people and really make a difference. Um, so that's my little spiel on that. Just, just do you, boo. Do your best, whatever that best looks like. Um, if that best for you is creating every day, if that best for you is seriously just playing Animal Crossing all day, it's all good. <laughs> and um, I think, okay, not too bad. Um, this is my contact info if you want to get a hold of me. Um, you can find me on the internets, Amanda underscore Allison, whether that's Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. Here is um, my link. In this link, I will actually post these slides shortly after this. So if you didn't take notes um, or screenshots, I am going to link this entire presentation on my Instagram. And then here's my email. If you ever want to email me for anything, um, I'm here for you and I'm totally down to talk. So let me exit this now and I'm going to open this chat. I'm so, so, so sorry for going over. I went over a lot um, longer than I thought I was. <laughs> but thank you all for joining me so much. I really, really appreciate you being here. Let me see. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Robert. <laughs> thank you all for sharing your fun facts. Oh, wow. She was Suze was born in G Germany. Oh, yay. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate you being here. Um, I hope that you learned something new or you found some clarity on anything that you may have been struggling with uh, in regards to creating content and genuine connection on social media. Remember at the end of the day that let me stop, there we go. <laughs> Remember at the end of the day that what's most important is that you take care of yourself and you show up for yourself in whatever way that looks like, that you always remain true to who you are, you know who you are, and you use that to spread joy and help other people. I'm so glad that you found this really helpful. Um, slide into my DMs if you, have further questions, again, I will link this entire presentation on my Instagram link for you. And I will see you all so soon. I appreciate you so much. I hope you have a really great time the rest of the day. This is an amazing idea. Hats off and major high fives 
to Bitwise for creating something that we all need right now, some genuine hum human interaction and connection. Um, and I am just like so happy to be part of it and to spend this time with you. Thank you so much. Slide in my DMs if you need me. I will be waiting and I will see you soon. Bye.